coming up on today's show, Xbox had another partner preview. WB Games is doubling down on live service, and there's an open letter from Twitch's CEO. What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and the funny stuff every Friday. I'm one of your hosts, Andrea Renee, joined live in studio by Mrs. Rihanna Manuel Pena. I showed up. You're here. It's very <laughs> exciting. I actually cleaned the desk off, de-dusted everything, moved the camera back because we have another very special guest. Please welcome host and producer back on the show, Naomi Kyle. Yay. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me again. Oh, of I'm so course. excited to finally be. It's been probably years. So. Yeah, it's been it's about time. an Far egregiously long. Yeah. long amount of time. Well, the whole reason I built this thing was to do this exact thing. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully we get to do more of it. And we're so excited that you are here this week because yeah. you just launched your brand new show, This right. Week in Gaming. Yeah, I'm very excited to well, talk more about it. Well, new in air quotes, yeah, I guess. It, yeah, exactly. There, we're on episode four. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a really good turnout, hopefully. And we really are just aiming for just base gaming news. It's really basic, um, but it's really fun. And I've been doing it with iHeart and it's being broadcast across Canada, which is very cool. Yay. So as a Canadian, very proud. Um, but yeah, a good sure old-fashioned we'll old radio show. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's basically it's just me reading the gaming news, you know, as I do. I've done it for years, um, and then we have we actually have you on for this uh, this episode. <gasps> that's so if you right. guys go click, go click wherever you get your podcast. Go to this week in gaming, <laughs> and there will be an episode with Andrea. Yeah, and we'll have yeah. the link in the show notes for you guys Yay. as well if you want to check it out. And please do follow and subscribe to Naomi's show. So this show, I actually guessed it on back in its other form that's right when it was previously on a different platform yes uh we've had various versions so i've done uh, last week in gaming so now it's called this week in gaming mm -hmm. then we've had before that every uh everybody games which you know is just another casual two hour to long podcast where we just chat about gaming stuff this is a bit more formatted it's 20 minutes it's super fast um so it's going to be like 10 minutes of gaming news super just like Here's all this important stuff you need to know. To know, we like to uh, break it down for you very easily, and then we do a ten minute kind of dissecting the news. And so that's when you came on, and we chatted about you know parenting in a, the age of video games for kids and all that stuff. So yes, in lieu of a new report, which was weird because a new report about uh, bullying yeah. in mm. video games over digital cosmetics. Yes. And it was interesting when you brought that story up to me because I was like, I feel like I've read this story before and it's because... It's not new per se. Well, it's because it, the we study, that specific yeah. study is new, yeah. but this specific issue has, has been, been... ongoing for yes, a long time. has I mean, been a problem. The the breadth of human existence, right? That's right. <laughs> bullying, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a really dark part of the human psyche that yeah. I wish didn't exist, but... You know, it's almost like a rite of passage now. We sadly. live in a society <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that makes people feel inferior. That's and they right. try to make themselves feel superior yes. by making others feel inferior. So. <laughs> I mean, the Lady Gaga skin in Fortnite is pretty superior. Yeah. I will say. Yeah. Ooh. I went ahead and bought it. You <laughs> did? Okay. I did. Okay. I had to. I haven't played in like months, but I had to buy the skin. For Gaga. For Gaga. You gotta do it for Gaga. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, did I update Fortnite? in anticipation of doing the same thing myself who could say <laughs> who could say Worth we'll, fi we'll find out eventually <laughs> um but welcome everybody to the show i want to remind y'all that we are on a new private membership platform or should i say premium membership so if you want to listen to what's good games ad free and get some fun exclusive content please head on over to supercast.com but it's what's good games at supercast.com mm -hmm. that's the actual address what's good games at supercast.com we're in the process of the patreon migration more details on that coming soon sorry for the delay on that some technical things happening on the back end there um but no need to worry about that because we've got a couple weeks till the end of the month anyway um thank you to this month's patreon producers the board ape gamers club ferris atia joshua franklin justin foshi and punctified and welcome to our patreon community we have a bunch of people that signed up, even though I told you specifically not to. Um, <laughs> and then a thank you to our new reviewers, Stefan Liu and Grizzly X Battle. If you guys don't have a couple dollars to throw our way, we understand. Times are tough right now. But hopefully you have a couple minutes to leave us a five-star review. Did you know that you can actually do a five-star review on Spotify? You don't mm -hmm. have to write any words. You just click all five of those stars. That's it. It's super easy. <laughs> I did not know that. Okay. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing that. Today now. you learned. I'm gonna and learn. it helps us. It helps people find us. So uh, a couple minutes is all we ask for. We appreciate it. We love y'all. All right, everybody. 
we're going to start off this week's episode talking about this Xbox partner preview. I feel like this came out of nowhere. They were just like, surprise. I mean, it's clear that they had been planning this, but then kind yes. of got derailed a little bit with the yeah. podcast that we saw while we were all at the Dice Summit. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. But it's good to hear again. Yes. I think it's interesting that that took such precedence in their PR sphere yeah. being people just being loud on the internet about what was happening and then as we discussed in terrible audio quality sorry again about that <laughs> um the nothing burgerness of mm -hmm. that whole podcast yeah I but mean, this not a nothing burger this is definitely not a nothing burger but i am glad that they're coming back and giving us like actual news that we want to hear about yes thanks <laughs> thanks for not leaving it at that podcast appreciate it <laughs> yeah Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, Rihanna, congrats on an awesome job on the Spawnies. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Because I haven't Crushed seen it. you since that came out. Yeah, I guess yeah. we recorded right before it, huh? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. it. It was an incredible experience, as always. I love working with Khalifa, and the Spawn On Me team is fantastic. The audience was so, so great. We were in yeah. chat the whole time, hanging out. It was a, a lot, lot of, of fun. A lot of viewers, too. A lot of people watching. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Twitch for putting us on for a page, and thanks again to IGN for co-streaming and yeah, it was, it was the best time. It always is. Ah, oh, so good. Yeah. Love you Khalif. guys are the best. Thanks. Yes. Uh, if you guys missed it, you can head on over to the Spawn On Me YouTube channel and <laughs> check it out there. And when you're there, you know, give our friend Khalif a follow. Yeah. A subscribe. Yeah. A, a little heart button. You know, some comments. Engagement is important, everybody. It is. Okay. On to the partner preview. So this was actually a lot beefier than I thought it was going to be. Mm. I thought maybe we would get just a small handful of games because the last partner preview was more of a a concentrated look at like just a like I think there was like six or seven titles in the mm -hmm. last one and this one had quite a few and it started with Unknown 9 Awakening so we originally heard about this game at Gamescom 2020 and had a really splashy cinematic trailer and we I think as a community were like what is this game I don't know anything about Unknown 9 and if you guys aren't familiar Unknown 9 as a entertainment IP is very much the definition of transmedia with mm. comic books. They have a digital series and now they're creating this game. And to be honest, I tried to find like what embodies this franchise. And I still am confused about oh what, uh, what, what the Unknown IP 9 is. actually is. Yeah, super deep lore. Yeah. yeah. So it's like very sci-fi based, of course, sci-fi and fantasy and has a really interesting collection of characters. And the look we got today was a really nice look at gameplay and the vibes that I got when I saw this was Assassin's Creed. Mm. Oh, yeah. Did you mm. guys see the trailer? I haven't I did seen not. the trailer. Well, now I have to pull the trailer up. Yeah. Let's watch it. Roll the tape. So let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer then, since neither of you have gotten a chance to watch it yet. And I do want to say that this trailer looks impressive. I really love the art stylings, but at first when I saw this, I was like, is this a new yeah, Assassin's Creed? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thought so that until this reflector Bandai Namco logo splashed on the screen. And then I was like, okay, so what is this then? And then I was like, oh, this is that game from forever ago that we didn't know about. But I absolutely want to know more about you know like what is happening here so according to xbox wire mm -hmm. this is a third person action adventure title centered on a character named haruna a truth seeker with a troubled past whose connection to a shadowy dimension known as the fold the animus has blessed her <laughs> with powerful abilities eagle eye um so <laughs> i just so clearly there's something different going on here but i just with the stealth sections mm, and the yeah. third person action adventure vibes it just really kind of made me think of what was happening in Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I mean, um, you had parkour in there. That's always going to yes. harken back to Assassin's Creed. Parkour and scarves. Yeah. I mean, scarves are, <laughs> scarves are great. Yeah. So they also wrote, today's announcement officially reveals Anya Chalatra as the actress who breathes life into the awakening. That's very possible I said her name completely wrong. Um, <laughs> and she's best known for her role as Yennefer of Vengerberg mm -hmm. in the Witcher Netflix series. Mm. So if you guys Big saw that, favorite. you all know who this actress is. Uh, a very striking look. So I'm interested to see how she does here. They have mentioned that she's never done a video game before, though this is her first video mm -hmm. game, and that's exciting for her. And then the other blurb about gameplay 
says, by harnessing the fold's potent energy, Haruna manipulates people, objects, and weapons from any distance. At the flick of a wrist, she obliterates whatever stands at her path. Wow. And her capacity to shield oncoming fire is nothing short of impressive. <laughs> <laughs> but what makes her a uniquely formidable force is that she can step into any of her foes, leveraging their size, skill, weaponry to defeat whoever she's up against. So that is like, hmm. wait, so she's like... Possessing people. Pos yeah, I was yeah. Like, that's what it sounds like. I'm getting like Dishonored. Mm. I'm getting a bit of like uh, Hellblade too in terms of like the art style. But yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. It's, uh, it's seeming like a kind of game that I, I would play. Third I person for sure. I mm -hmm. want to have really high expectations and hopes for this. Yes. But I'm trying to be measured mm. because I also had really like high hopes for Forspoken, mm -hmm. yeah. which this is giving me a lot of Forspoken vibes Energy. as yes. well. Yeah. And that game was not a bad game by any means. Nope. It just didn't live up to my expectations. And so I'm trying to be a little bit more measured now mm -hmm. until I get to see and play the game for myself, especially since um, Reflector as a studio um, is has kind of like an interesting background. And I like that Bandai Namco has come on board and said, hey, we're going to publish this and work with you guys. And I'm just, you know, yeah. I want to I see more. I want to play. I want to check it out. But it's coming soon, apparently. Summer 2024. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. It's really soon. Very soon. So yeah. we'll, we'll be hearing more and more, I'm sure. But it's exciting to see. I, I wouldn't say this is necessarily in a triple A, maybe even more of a double A space since, you know, it's connected to a large house of IP. There's obviously an existing fan yeah, base. So. Yeah. That's a, a lot of support that will hopefully cross over into the game. But I, I just like seeing something new coming to our neck of the woods as a gaming audience. You know, it, like Immortals, Forspoken. There, there's been some of these, you know, cross between fantasy and, and game mechanics that we've seen before that have been sometimes successful and sometimes not successful. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I always encourage innovation. It's fun to see somebody trying something different, even if it's with an existing IP. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. And this absolutely looks up my alley, the exact kind of game I love to play. So fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there was quite a few other announcements, just some of the ones that I wanted to call out that I saw. Um, the Creatures of Ava, with the, they mentioned the story by Rihanna Pratchett, who's known for doing a lot of really cool narrative stuff in video games. This is the gameplay that they showed in the Xbox Partner Preview. It's a really cool art style. Um, you, The first thing I thought was like, oh my God, She's like Snow White <laughs> in the sense that she's like musically in tune with all these cute little creatures. And yeah. she is like walking around and all the animals are following her around like a Disney princess. This so is like a beautiful art princess. style. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, very pretty, very colorful. If you're if you're listening, if you have time, go check Look out the YouTube guys. video. This is gorgeous. So cute. Yeah, so I like that the partner preview it had such a kind of wide range of all of the different kinds of games. And we've been seeing that know from a lot of the platform showcases whether it be nintendo playstation or xbox in this case so you play the role of a creature saver according mm. to oh, the wow. xbox wire ar um, article learn the local customs of the native people of ava who have a deep spiritual connection with the planet and all of its light form life forms and you can use flute skills. You can communicate with these creatures and see what they see and request their assistance to figure out puzzles that involve Ava's surroundings and the natural world. Oh, that's nice that you're not fighting them like, I <laughs> like, know. like, like captured slave like animals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a good twist on the genre for sure. So yeah, I vibrant. think it's super cute. And it's also coming in 2024. So I wanted to highlight that one as well. I'm not going to go through everything in the Xbox Partner Preview, as I already mentioned, but just a couple of quick highlights the Sinking City 2 trailer was terrifying, and I'm sure Brittany was quivering in excitement, as she does. <laughs> the Roblox Griefville cross Chucky. I don't know what this is. It looked kind of like Dead by Daylight, um, but the music in the trailer was super spooky, and it feels like a really fun like Halloween thing, but otherwise I'm like, no, Chucky, please. No, thank you. Um, Stalker was the one that stood out for me mm. as a fan of the Metro series. I had tweeted that I have a gap in my gaming knowledge when it comes to stalker specifically i never played the original stalker franchise on pc and i'm assuming neither of no. you did as well um, <laughs> no. but metro metro yes metro yeah like so metro stuff. is a different type of gameplay but visual same kind of visual same. aesthetic yeah. yeah um the you know like this like fallout mm -hmm. ukraine like weird mutated monsters but yeah. clearly stalker as a franchise is a different game and i thought it was really interesting that xbox 
has out now the Legends of the, the Zone trilogy. Shadows of Chernobyl, Clear Sky, and The Call of Pripyat are all available to play in anticipation of Stalker 2, mm. which is coming September 5th, 2024, later this year. Um, also, we got Monster Jam Showdown, some gameplay from them, Persona 3 Reloaded Expansion Pass. We got a good look at Tales of Kenzar Zhao, yes. which was awesome. I know you're very excited about that mm -hmm. one. Oh, yeah. We got some details on Frostpunk 2, their pre-order and beta news. And then um, another one I wanted to point out, Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess, which is a mix of action and real-time strategy that's coming from Capcom. Mm. Really cool art style and an unexpected game for me that I didn't yeah. think to be interested in. But um, head on over to the Xbox Wire if you guys are interested in looking at deep dives. I do really appreciate that the Xbox team knows that people like us are like, I need more info. I don't just want a trailer. <laughs> and their team's been doing a really great job of being like, come check out this interview. Yeah. And look at this, you know, exclusive coverage that we did. I mean you are kind of taking my job away from me and I'm trying not to be upset about that while also being excited that you're doing really thorough work on your own titles. But, you know, we can discuss that later at some point. <laughs> Take it explain. offline. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. That is going to be the feature news that we wanted to do for this week. I am adding on one other thing because it's just a little bit too big for me to put into headlines. Because with this new format, the thing I've been trying to do, Naomi, is to do really short form news and then leave like one big story for us to talk about so we have more time for hands-on. But man, there's just been so much news this last <laughs> month and most of it's been bad. Yeah. And I don't know if this next story is just universally bad or just feels bad, man. So you all may have seen that Warner Brothers made announcement. I should say Warner Brothers Discovery, like the big parent company, mm -hmm. yeah. was in yeah. the news this week and the headline was Volatile AAA Console Games will lean into free-to-play and mobile as they've been discussed by the head of WBD at a Morgan Stanley speaking event as reported by GameSpot. Let me just read a little bit from this story because Eddie did some really great reporting here. Um, Warner Brothers Discovery gaming boss J.B. Perret discussed some of the gaming's, the company's strategy for gaming going forward, and it includes more live service, mobile, and free-to-play games. He said, quote, we're doubling down on games as an area where we think there is a lot more growth opportunity that we can tap into with the IP that we have and some of the capabilities we have on the studios where we're uniquely positioned as both a publisher and a developer of the games. Not controversial. That seems like a winning strategy. He continued that their recent gaming output has focused on AAA games for console, and that's great when a game like Hogwarts Legacy sells 22 million copies and becomes the best-selling game of the year, but this kind of success is never guaranteed in what Perrette calls a volatile market, as we've been discussing all year. Mm -hmm. It's volatile. That's a really nice way of saying it. Oh, yeah. He pointed out that one of WBD's latest big games, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, was a disappointment for the company. Mm. So that's not the news. The news is down below, later into the story, according to this Morgan Stanley speaking event, he said, rather than just launching a one and done console game, how do we develop a game around, for example, Hogwarts Legacy or Harry Potter that's a live service game where people can live and work and build and play in that world on an ongoing basis? Mm -hmm. Sounds cool. Right. I feel like that's not in and of itself controversial. Sure. It sounds cool. But yeah. I had mentioned it feels a little bit confusing coming off of the incredible success of a standalone single player mm -hmm. narrative focused adventure game. Yeah. I'm just like, wait, what? But that wasn't <laughs> you don't you don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, I think they're they're gunning for people who are gonna stay in that world, buy stuff in that world, you know, the cosmetics stuff. And I they everyone wants to, you know, have a, a Minecraft or something that's the biggest success for the Fortnite. So mm -hmm. I just feel like it's that's everyone's kind of focus. They just want to keep people in the game and so hopefully have their eyeballs and their money. Yeah. <laughs> along like, along with it, you know? Yeah. Just so not just one off. Life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what it is. Yeah, I definitely you know? think the idea of building a metaverse has been at the forefront of a lot of these executives' minds over the last five years. Yeah. And we're seeing some of that come to fruition. Obviously, we had the big Disney announcement mm -hmm. earlier this year, them investing in Fortnite and making their own kind of Disney verse with Epic Games. And we know that Xbox is already all in working on that as well on a number of different fronts. Um, PlayStation, we I think have kind of yet to see where they stand as yeah. far as creating a metaverse is. But 
I'm not surprised that this is the move that they wanted to make, especially in the wake of Tencent's head of their gaming division mm -hmm. being like, we're doing good, but not good enough. Never right. enough. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, but what is good enough? Right? We talked about this on the show last week, and I just don't know where that line is. Like, what what is a success if not selling 22 million copies? Quite honestly, it... it <gasps> I don't think the, the the limit does not exist. I just rewatch Mean Girls. It, it's yeah. there. There yeah. is no ceiling for no these companies like that growth every year or yeah. else. And even if it's cut. growth, if it's not enough growth, then yeah, curtains. Yeah, yeah. And I guess it's it is the thing that you know games have become more ex more expensive to make, mm -hmm. um, and as we continue yeah. exponentially more expensive. And the dollar value for one offs is like a one time buy in, right? And then they don't have that attention anymore so it's i think those live services are just going to be more and more the thing that people are focusing on but whether or not they can compete with the ones that already exist is like we have to wait and see for that i don't know yeah. i think that's what gaming overall as an industry is reckoning with right now is just too much growth too fast and there's been whispers from other pundits in the space talking about is a video game crash coming i'm like no it's not no it's, it's not constricting. coming constricting um, it's constricting only because there was a ballooning, but yeah. it's not constricting to a point where a crash is inevitable. No, there's too many gamers, means. too many kids. Yeah, like <laughs> no one's abandoning the industry right, right. In, the, in mass like that. No, yeah, yeah. and it's consumer spend is up. Like a yeah. lot of the economic stories that are happening or coming out of the United States in particular is that there's not a slowdown of spending no. happening. No, now how we're paying for all of that spending is yeah. a whole another conversation for a different podcast. <laughs> um, but I think that this is expected, but also makes me, as somebody who loves those big AAA. single player mm -hmm. single player narrative focused games, a, like a little bit concerned that they're going to take some of their really talented studios and make them work on a live service game that they don't want to work on like Bioware had to do for EA yeah. and now look what happened to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that they're going to get back on track, but I, I don't want to see that happen to a studio like Monolith or like Rocksteady mm -hmm. or, you know, like Avalanche or any of these other teams that have done really cool narrative storytelling, yeah. unless that's the, what the studio also wants to do. And then I'm like, yeah. you do you boo. But I just, you know, I love those stories. I want more of them. Yeah, that's all same. I wanted to say about it. <sighs> All right, and on that note, we're gonna take our first quick break of the show. When we come back, we've got some quick headlines for you. Stick with us, we'll see you in a minute. Let's get into some headlines for this week. Starting with Game of the Year winning RPG Baldur's Gate 3 is finally getting a physical edition this spring and developer Larian Studios yeah. has confirmed it will be a whopping four discs Ooh. Ooh. on <laughs> Xbox Series X. They, they said the data was just too much for the initially planned three discs, game. so four it is. The PC version is coming out first with a PS5 version slated to come sometime in April, and then the Xbox version will follow later in the spring. Larian also confirmed official mod support is in the works, including cross-platform mod support. Woo! That's exciting. Yeah. It'll be fun. Director of Publishing at Michael Dows at Larian called the support robust, mm -hmm. but not but did not indicate when it would be available. So I love when they use that word, robust. <laughs> it just feels like, y'all, we did everything. It's going to yep. be busty, guys. Mm. It's going to be... Woo, yeah, bust out. <laughs> robust mods. There's definitely going to be busty mods for I, sure. I mean, the, without, the sky's the limit at that point. Without yeah. a doubt. <laughs> yep, it's going to happen. It's awesome. Um, I can take the next one. So women get a league of their own in MLB The Show 24. That's a nice little I think that's twist. Cool. Yeah, yeah, Women's History like, Month. Very happy to see that. So ladies are making their way to the award-winning baseball simulator from Sony San Diego in Road to the Show, Women Pave Their Way. In the new addition to the Road to the Show mode, you'll be able to create and play as a woman ball player. And uh, this is according to PlayStation blog. So narrative designer Molly Braley said, this feature was inspired by the stories of women in baseball. It's also meant to highlight the strength, tenacity, and resilience that it takes to break into the sport, mm -hmm. but not shy yeah. away from the struggles that many have faced. And MLB The Show 24 hits PS5 and PS4 on March 19th. And uh, MLB The Show has also had really great success with the Negro League content that they did. I believe this was 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, and I I've heard nothing but high praise for that uh, piece of content. So I'm really excited about this one. It's, it's going to be cool to hear. I loved seeing this in the news because I think it's so important when developers 
lead the way with diversifying the characters and the themes, storylines in their video games. And it takes people at the top of their game, a really great studio like Sony San Diego to say, you know, no one's going to force us to put these yeah. stories that are part of the history of baseball mm -hmm. into our really popular sports game. But we're going to do it because we think it's important and yeah. we love telling these stories. And, you know, kudos to you, PlayStation, for funding it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little girls yeah. Will, will be playing that and they'll be like, I can, yeah. I can play baseball. They can. You know, I can become a, in the league or just pick up a sport or something. Yeah. yeah I love that. It's inspiring. Love it. Representation matters. Yeah. Okay, next up, Steam has finally launched its game hiding features. Y'all have been waiting. <laughs> I know it. Ooh. Previously available only in beta, the ability to hide your game library from your friends is now available on the PC gaming platform. You can now mark your games as private, which makes them invisible to others in your library and your activity feeds. Great. I know y'all have some dirty secrets hiding in your Steam There's library. There's some dirty games out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody has to know I'm playing Honey Pop again. <laughs> Listen, dream, it's Dreamlight Valley for me. I just don't need the, oh. I just don't need the heat. You should you should wear that badge proudly. There's no shame in playing Dreamlight Rally. Oh, thank. You. Well, I mean, the, the shame is that I should be playing other things. It's like when <laughs> I get on, it's like when I get on Britney's case for going back and playing her SNES games for like True. the 100th time, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Girl, we got stuff to play." She's there's like, new I know. things. Yeah, uh, stay on top of it. <laughs> it's tough, you know. Like the backlog is is intimidating. Sometimes I know. you just want your comfort food. You know. Yeah. Good point. Yes. Good point. Exactly. That's true. Uh, well, speaking of Nintendo, <clears throat> Yuzu creators agree to pay Nintendo $2.4 million over its Switch emulator. Yeah. So Tropic Haze, the developers of an online Nintendo Switch emulator, got walloped by Nintendo's legal team last week for what Nintendo called fa facilitating piracy at a colossal scale. <laughs> or uh, should I say they were threatened with the walloping dis in with a walloping and decided to agree to Nintendo's demands, which included surrendering the yuzu.emu.org domain to Nintendo, shutting yeah. down all servers, hosting sites, and social media promotion, and deleting all copies of the emulator and software used to build it. Oh, wow. and handing over any physical hardware they used as well. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh they my got gosh. cleaned out, y'all. So <laughs> Yuzu's Nintendo 3DS emulator Citra is included in the deal, meaning both Yuzu and Citra are permanently offline. The interesting wrinkle to the story is what may have happened to, if Nintendo and Tropic Haze went to court because it is not a cut and dried case in regards to copyright infringement. Mm. But apparently the daunting legal battle over DMCA rights and associated costs was far less appealing than fully destroying the project and paying damages. So in a po post on the user discord, the developer Bunny wrote... We started the projects in good faith oh. out of passion for Nintendo and its consoles and games, and we're not intending to cause harm. Yeah, Piracy was never our intention, and we believe that piracy of video games and on video game consoles should end. So they were on board with everything, you know, being reckoned with, but it sounds like it was a really, what a hit. really tough hit. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, Nintendo has historically been very aggressive in its legal battles against people who run emulating services, who pirate their games. They've had a closed ecosystem since they've been making hardware and software. Yeah. And I was not surprised to see this. We almost covered the news last week, and then I was like, I want to wait until a little bit more comes out. And then, of course, we got this news that, in fact, you know, Yuzu is officially shut down. It's done so. Yeah. It's gone. Like... <laughs> Yeah. Yeet it into the sun. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the kind huh. of legal analysis that I read about this was that, you know, emulators aren't inherently illegal. There are some precedents for where emulators, depending on how they're set up, can be done legally. But this one provided like a like a backdoor loophole for people mm. to kind of jailbreak Nintendo's technology, which allowed for piracy, which yeah. is why Nintendo called it what did they say? Facilitating piracy at a colossal scale. Yikes. And that's on you know, Tropical Haze's watch for putting the software and the source code um, available and making those loopholes built within their system. So, yeah. And there is an argument to be made for video game preservation, which, you know, is something that we've all been thinking about a lot with mm -hmm. the, the age of streaming and yeah. you know, EULAs and not owning any of the content that we love to play so much. But Nintendo is a unique one where you can play a lot of their games still on their system. So it, it is a, a tough one to, to net out. I, I feel really bad for Tropic Haze in this. It's tough. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like they had nefarious intent when they, I'm sure they you know, didn't, yeah. created all of this. So, yeah. 
Sorry, yeah, guys. But when you create something like this, you just have to assume the worst in humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm never for gonna going to forget the interview that Todd Howard did about the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim mm. when he said we had to make sure to build into the gameplay that you can't kill the children <laughs> in the game because we know that that's what people would do. Yep. So yeah. So children, you can't kill children in Skyrim. And he's like, because we know if we had it in there that people would do it. And they would literally do it just to say like, oh, see, look, I can kill a kid. Yeah. yeah. Or for views or whatever. Twisted. Y'all yeah. are twisted. It's real, real dark. Yep. Yeah. Real dark. Um, hopefully this is a little bit brighter. Uh, we have an open letter from the new CEO of Twitch. So Dan Clancy, and, and I believe he came into the position last year, I want to say. He said it's been about a year Reset, since he's been yeah. there. So uh, in, you know, in efforts to be transparent, we have uh, a couple words from them. So long story short, they've talked about some of the improvements they made to Twitch platform in 2023 and then highlighted a few of the things that they want to focus on this year including um, clip, clip export direct to Instagram, mobile clip editor improvements, um, expanding their stream together program. That's where you have several streamers all in one, mm -hmm. one feed, uh, making it easier and more intuitive to set up, and then adding the ability to spontaneously find and collaborate with streamers, which is pretty interesting. Um, they're also adding ways to merge your chats and combine viewership with other streamers, which is good for everybody, numbers going up. Um, making improvements to Twitch Mobile, the ads and the partner program, um, adding more sponsor uh, brand deals and increasing the sub prices in addition to improving community safety tools. And they didn't detail how they're going to be doing that, but hmm, my hunch is that there's some AI involved. So we'll see how, how all of that plays out. But I appreciate getting this level of communication from somebody at Twitch, mm -hmm. namely the CEO. I think it's a, a move in the right direction. Really going for really transparency and, and candor and like making sure audience is informed and that they're trying to work in, on improving because there's been a couple like stuff that they've done that yeah you know they haven't been they could very handled good differently for and mm -hmm. so that's the nicest way you could have put it you know <laughs> that's just how i roll man i just try to keep it <laughs> nice and pg well i mean they were definitely in the shit over yeah. the last two years yeah. like they've had some really bad things happen they've had their community revolt against them they've lost a couple of their very high profile streamers Absolutely. to other platforms and the monetization changes that they implemented last year in particular, I think, were a huge blow to a lot of the yeah. creator community who's really been sustaining a lot of the audience on Twitch over many years. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people have been looking at Twitch as a platform and going like, fix it. Yeah. <laughs> like you used to be this really amazing place to build communities and to draw people in and embody the spirit of what brings the gaming community together. And it felt like it's just been going downhill since Amazon's takeover and a lot of the senior leadership who founded Twitch exited. Right. And we, they had additional layoffs last year and they lost some of their team. So I think a lot of us are looking at Twitch going, what is up with you guys <laughs> what's the plan and so i think it's a really smart move by their ceo to come out at the yep. beginning of the year and say listen mm -hmm. we got some cool things coming let's talk about like all the positives and how we can start like maybe rebuilding our relationship with you guys both as a from a creator standpoint and as an audience standpoint and i think that that's great i think it's a really smart thing and i think these are all going to be really positive steps forward yeah, yeah. i've and been really happy seeing him every every time there's something that comes out or he's talking to you know, in those streams with Mary Kish or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, we um, love Mary. We love Mary. <laughs> She's the best. Yeah. it's And it's it's very much geared towards, like, helping the creators and getting them back on board. And I think um, it's true that it has been harder and harder to grow on Twitch, mm. I feel like, for a lot of creators. So this is really good. But yeah. you were going to say something? No, something I was happened. just going <laughs> to mention, like, before we started recording, you yeah. were even saying it's it's great to see somebody a little bit more visible, a little bit more transparent. Yeah. Front communicating facing. on yeah. behalf of Twitch because a lot exactly. of – the, the audience and the community have not felt heard. Right. So it's good that we're seeing a turnaround. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're hoping. Let's keep it. Let's keep it positive. We need it. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> Another headline that I didn't want to have to write into the show this week, but sadly broke right before we started recording is from Variety. And it says Rooster Teeth is shutting down after 21 years. But this was a really hard piece of news to get like first thing in the morning today yeah, yeah. And, and it's raining here oh it happened God. while the staff was still in the all hands like it like it broke like, in real time simultaneously as the staff were finding out yeah and that oh also is like 
I can only imagine for people who are confused and have questions and are like, what's happening? And mm -hmm. it just feels so bad when these companies don't give the people inside any kind of heads up or warning. Yeah. And it's like, if you're fully shutting down a brand, like you can tell people and give them time to prepare and yeah. process and it's, yeah, everything. It just feels, mm -hmm. it just feels so, so yucky. Mm -hmm. Um, so rooster teeth in business for over 20 years, went through multiple ownership changes over the last couple of years. Parent company is currently Warner Brothers Discovery. And they've been, you know, having some trouble like a lot of other people in the digital media space has. Yeah. Um, they, let me see, let me find Jordan's. So Jordan Levin is the general manager of Rooster Teeth right now. I wanted to find his exact like quote. quote here of what he wrote. So he says, with a heavy heart, I announced that Rooster Teeth is shutting down due to challenges facing digital media resulting from fundamental shifts in consumer behavior and monetization across platforms, advertising, and patronage. Our legacy is not just a collection of content, but a history of pixels burned into our screens, minds, and hearts. Mm -hmm. And that's from the memo that was distributed internally at Rooster Teeth. That's really sweet. It's just really, really awful. Mm -hmm. H uh, having been at multiple companies now that have done this, I, I can speak from firsthand experience that it fucking sucks. Dude, I remember when we, and not to change the subject, but quickly when we heard about G4 shutting down, we heard it on the weekend from a tweet before we that got into Sunday the office. Sunday night news. It was yeah. Sunday night news. And people were like expecting go in the next day and, you know, finishing filming the show that they're working mm -hmm. on. And like, yeah. not surprised you can't, you're locked out of everything. It was horrible. And this is no better. It's never, never good. And my yeah. heart goes out to everybody who got this news today. That mm -hmm. sucks. Yeah. We have a lot of friends there. A so. lot. Yeah. And what's really good games sucks. has worked with rooster teeth for many years at this point, And we are still partners with the roost, the podcast network, which is the one part of rooster teeth that apparently <laughs> is going staying. to yeah. survive on is the sales team. <laughs> Shocking. Um, but I'm very excited that they're not going away, but this story did indicate that Warner brothers discovery is looking to sell that asset as well. So mm -hmm. how that's going to impact our show TBD, we don't know yet, but you know, we do know that Rooster Teeth has made some substantial changes to their business over the last couple of years, including canceling RTX, their fan show, which we oh, did a yeah. What's Good Games meet at, oh. meet up at and did a panel and all kinds of stuff and got to see lots of y'all. And, you know, you know, as Naomi mentioned, we have all kinds of friends who work at Rooster Teeth and it's just a really sad day. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it's such an, uh, you know, the fans of Rooster Teeth, I know it's like they've been there for so long and they've just consumed so much of their content and I feel like Rooster Teeth has this really dedicated audience and it's just so sad also for the people who grew up watching their stuff and you know yeah. just to see them yeah I'm sending out my best for everyone affected it's really hard especially yep. with everything going on in the industry it's just another blow yeah <laughs> it is you yeah. know and for content creators or digital media space folks like us you know it really is just a weird time and we're terrified yeah <laughs> well, it's I'm just, terrified it's just <laughs> a stark guys, reminder but. to everybody listening and watching yeah. that if you like a show you like a content creator you want them to continue you must engage with them as much as possible yes yeah and it doesn't mean you have to listen to every minute of every piece of content they put out but you know throw them likes put up comments every once in a while make sure that if they have a subscription and you have the money that you you know support them through that click on the ads like listen to the ads when they come up if you can you know it's things like that that really make a difference in aggregate that I think as consumers of media we sometimes get a little numb to because we're so inundated with media mm -hmm. across so many different platforms Constantly. now like yeah there's just an abundance of ways to consume content especially in digital spaces and it's like one of those oh we don't know what we got till it's gone and yeah. it's like well it's gone now. It's gone, gone. And I think uh, somebody in one of our group chats mentioned in the Reddit, they're encouraging people to download and, and archive all of the content that they've as subscribed much to possible, as much as possible. Because alive. I'm with yeah. my megaphone saying yeah. that because I had it. so much of my work just deleted. And yeah. Warner Brothers was one of those companies <laughs> that deleted everything I worked on when I was at Machinima. It's just gone it's gone like some of it like a couple videos here and there got saved by people who were able to either upload them to other sites or to archive them personally but mm -hmm. like i didn't know that they were just gonna like turn all of that off 
And I don't know what's going to happen to the Rooster Teeth catalog of content. I think I said, I, I think I saw their shopping around to see if anybody would acquire some of the shows. To put they, it on their platforms. To put it on their like platforms. Like any, any platform. There's so many platforms now. Yeah. I mean, Fubo TV, Freebie, it just mm-hmm. is like some ideas, but. Yes, and, according and to yeah. the article there's said that. movie coming too. Yeah, yeah they're the currently movie. in talks to sell the rights to certain parts of the catalog, including the popular anime style series, Ruby, yeah. the pioneering sci-fi spoof, Red vs. Blue, which is how Rooster Teeth got their start. Mm-hmm. And then Michael B. Jordan's animated mecha series, Gen Lock, mm-hmm. is oh, just yeah. a couple of the things that they are looking to to shop. Yeah. So sorry, man. Yeah. That's bad a big news. old bummer. Big bad news. Yeah. Crappy news. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What a way. Yeah. To round out the headlines. <laughs> okay. On that note, let's take a quick break where you're gonna listen to some ads. But if you don't want to listen to some ads and you want to support the show, don't forget we have a premium membership. What's good gains.supercast.com. Check it out. All kinds of cool benefits. Like supporting our show. Did I say that already? <laughs> don't let us go away, everybody. Okay, here are the ads now. Let's talk about what we've been playing. And this week, ladies, I've got a preview. Yes. Ooh. For an upcoming game from the folks at Funcom called Dune Awakening. Mm. So I got to chat with our friend and friend of the show, Trisha Hirschberger, about this mm. on her stream earlier this week. If you guys caught that over on her channel, we love Trisha. And she was at the same preview event that I was at where we got to have a first look at Dune Awakening and then got to watch Dune Part 2, which is amazing. (laughs) We'll talk about that in just a second. So I wanted to talk quickly about Dune Awakening and this new survival MMO coming from the team at Funcom, which you guys may know from Conan Exiles, which Mm. was the last big MMO that they did. So they put out a new trailer um, and then they put out a developer direct where they talked about some of the artist inspiration and some of the work that they've been doing with the Herbert Estate about and the uh, movie team in using some of their art assets and things like that to kind of create some of the unique, cohesive look that the new movie franchise has. Smart smart move. Yes, I, I think it's an incredibly smart move. So Dune Awakening is, like I mentioned, a survival MMO. It's a starting point as a... Oh, sorry. Survival as a starting point and political endgame as a destination is kind of like the Mm. thing they were talking about in the overall arc of how the gameplay of this MMO is going to go. So there's going to be an emphasis on multiplayer as in the massively multiplayer online suggests. And what I like, though, is that there's going to be some really cool dedicated single player stuff that you can do. And then the PvP stuff specifically is going to be some of it's going to be very optional. Um, they are building this game in Unreal 5, which is why it looks so pretty. Mm, There's stunning. going to be a big emphasis, of course, like most MMOs on crafting, survival. Um, there's going to be a so some base guild building system, in there? Base, building. base building. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of pieces to break down here. So wow. let me start with the survival elements. Because like what makes an MMO like a survival MMO versus, you know, your standard you know, MMO? And obviously, because this is on Arrakis, part of the crux of the Dune franchise, the planet has really harsh conditions and water management is going to be a big part of the gameplay. Um, Sun management, meaning when you're moving about, when you're in deep shade, when you're in other kinds of shade, is also going to be part of the survival elements they had mentioned. Um, And of course, other players as well. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to come for you. But are you going to drink their blood? Maybe. (laughs) <laughs> That's a thing you could do, apparently, in this game. I mean, you do filter the blood into water. It's this whole Fremen thing, you guys. Um, <laughs> so that's interesting. I don't particularly gravitate towards survival games of any type, but this is Dune, so am I going to check it out? You guys know I'm going to check it out. Um, for people who are listening on podcasts, I'm literally holding up a notebook because I wrote physical I know, notes, right? Or, like with an actual pen and paper. I was very proud of myself. You're very excited. I, I thought it one. was genius. I'm like, yeah, any way you can get your stuff organized you know like <laughs> paper still exists pen still exists Kick, kicking it old school yeah everybody um what i thought was a really cool part of the game that they described was this coriolis storm system mm. so they described a pvp zone in the deep desert of dune mm. where the large sandworms are mm-hmm. that is going to be utilizing this technology that they're kind of dubbing the shifting sands 
meaning once a week, the map of the zone will completely reset and you have to learn the map all over again. That's so I cool. I love that. Ooh. That's genius. I was like, whoa. Huh. I'm simultaneously excited and terrified because <laughs> who's got the time to relearn something like this but that's where the high end rewards are going to be yeah. end game yeah. activities keeps it interesting and it's like where's Zer? like you just chase that dude all around the galaxy yeah, <laughs> yeah but i could always go to google and type in where is Zer? and in fact it was in my top google results for <laughs> many years before they changed Zer's functionality um but i'm really excited to see how they're going to actually bring this together from a gameplay standpoint because mm -hmm. it sounds like a really interesting idea particularly when you think about how mass deserts in real life actually like the sand dunes move and shape with the winds and stuff mm -hmm. so i was like this is this is a really cool concept and i really want to see how they're going to execute it um base building as we touched on when we were watching the trailer is obviously a core mechanic in this game um as it was so funcom said that they take everything they learned from conan exiles and are building on top of that and they're also allowing players to create blueprints for the houses that they build and the hmm. bases that they build that they can then sell to other players oh wow oh snap and i was like they got you. yes that is <laughs> sign me up they got you am i gonna Wait be making blueprints money. no am i gonna mm -hmm. be buying somebody else's blueprints <laughs> yes oh, okay <laughs> oh my god in another world if i had more time would i maybe co consider it's creating blueprints? its own in-game economy yes yeah, yeah. yeah. and i i think about fallout and you know kind of their take on this mm -hmm. and that's like my for me, my closest one-to-one -one and other like really extensive base building. And I really wanted to get into base building in Fallout and I just couldn't ever dedicate the time. I just too ADHD, mm -hmm. too distracted by everything else. But I love that the, they're doing that here and I'm excited to see the different kinds of um, things that they're going to bring in aesthetically mm -hmm. and how these bases are going to look. Um, I do want to mention that there's going to be really cool vehicles in the game. Yeah, I was mm. seeing in the trailer. Of it. Yeah, so the Ornithopter, of course, is the iconic um, kind of helicopter looking thing that is going to be in the game. But there's also going to be a variety of uh, land vehicles and other kinds of air vehicles. In addition, there's also going to be a Sorry, gameplay. My stomach's making noise. <laughs> That's totally OK. There's going to be a gameplay element called shipwrecks mm. where starships, crashed starships are going to be these generally pvp zones they said where you're gonna be able to like scavenge them the loot, like a dungeon mm. and oh get different God. kinds of tech this is up my alley yeah so i didn't want to play this <laughs> i'm like everything they were saying was like yes 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 yes, yes i need yes. to see i need to see more yeah mm -hmm. um i need to see more and i want to see like more gameplay so the game is currently in closed beta I asked a variety of questions mm -hmm. trying to get Funcom to answer me when it's coming out of closed beta or when the launch window is. And they're like, I'm sorry, what's the question? So they dodged me real good. No. So uh -huh. the, the answer is, we're working on the game. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So there is no answer as to when it's coming out of closed beta and when it's going to be ready for launch. So they're like, Fair. I'm sorry, what was the question? I was like, you're good at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so don't know. They're working on it. Okay. Um, so that to me is like, well, okay, I guess I'll just sit tight to tight then but i really love this quick look that they gave us at the game and i'm looking for a more in-depth preview do we know how long they've been working on it um i didn't ask exactly how many it's years a, they've been working on it but big, i think it's been like three or four yeah sounds big this is a big game big game big There's team maybe longer okay i mean well. i mean yeah it's gonna be big and i love that they have a political faction system the two factions that are going to be in the game at the beginning are the harkonnen and the atreides factions even though i always say harkonnen because that's the way they said it in the 80s movie you know <laughs> don't at me um, the new movie <laughs> says harkonnen i don't know who's right potato potato um and they're going to be adding more factions post launch and you're going to be able to study within the different schools of the universe so you can build out your skill tree for your individual character in the game wow. and they had mentioned that you could take skills from different schools meaning if you start out Customize as it. like um want to be like a, a soda car or like a combat focused person you can study with the Bene Gesserit to learn more of their skills and I was like Ooh, I like oh my this. gosh mm. this is cool so eager to see how that comes together RPG in elements. the progression tree as well yeah, yeah. it sounds like the lore and the world of dune translates very well to a an, video game an RPG, which yeah, is very cool yeah. to see yeah yeah I mean Frank Herbert did an amazing job building the world of Dune across his book series, and it's one of my favorite sci-fi series of all time. If you've never read those books, they're very good, and they're actually a surprisingly fast read. Um, if you're into like you know big you know 
uh, literature books, uh, fantasy books. But um, I don't usually play MMOs. Yeah. My only MMO I've ever dedicated a substantial amount of time to is Destiny. Mm. And I don't know if I have time for another one, but this one sounds really good. Sounds I really mean, exciting. It sounds like you might have a lot of time to wait. <laughs> Since we have yeah, no take your time. Come out in 2027, please. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Too Just many games to play before that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> because I'm real busy right now, as Naomi is, with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that game's great. I, I don't know if you guys have been Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy fans since, like, seven. That's definitely Brit's realm. Like, my oh, big yeah. thing that I told our audience was Final Fantasy VII Remake really hooked me in the franchise. I dabbled Remake's in great. a couple mm -hmm. of games, but was very excited about what I thought was Episode Two, which is now obviously Rebirth. And yes. It hasn't and disappointed. Part two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. I think if you're looking for something that's like expanded on remake and made it even bigger and like, I mean, it, they don't call it uh, an open world. It's more like a expanded world because, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was very linear in the first part. So this this next one is really good. Um, I obviously am maybe a bit biased because I worked for Square Enix. I did their countdown to launch live stream and I got to meet the voice actors. And But there is something really special about this game and how they took from the original and made just like totally just brought it to the new age. And I really like everything about this game is beautiful. And I'm always like, everyone's so hot. And it's just like, yeah, it's, it's oh, really. Oh yeah, I just did the the beach stuff. And I was like, oh yeah. Can they just wear their beach yeah. wear the whole yeah. game? Yeah, <laughs> just like <laughs> bikinis everywhere all the time. Uh, but yeah, it's beautiful. It's so, yeah, it just like captured a lot of what I used to love when I played the seven games. When I played seven when I was younger and then X2 much later on but i thought i just thought everything about rebirth and i'm still going through it obviously um is fun and you could play it if at your own like pace you don't have to do hard mode like you can just if you're just about the story just go easy and it's it's, it's just as fun and oh i definitely dropped it down to baby it's beautiful. Mode. It's a pretty game. yeah okay good yeah <laughs> <laughs> i got like probably 20 hours in and i was like what am i doing yeah i know i yeah. i mean i i love the what they did with the combat system and i love yeah. how they improved it from what we saw in remake but i ain't got time to learn it all no just do this yeah but just just yeah. go through it and uh, experience the world and it's pretty it's like 40 hours and if you just just focus on the story mm. um oh okay, but there is a lot I'm, to that I'm game. like 40 hours in and i'm only on chapter five are you doing side quests or anything? All of them. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. <laughs> Just don't do those. There's so um, many, though. There's a lot. Not yeah, all those the game fiend is... dens, though. Ain't got time for Chadley and his combat simulator, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the game definitely encourages you to do more outside, like, you know, yeah. the Chocobo stuff or, like, there's, like, all the mini games. Find a bunch that. of segues. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's always different saying thing, for fans, and I would love to hear your, you know, thoughts on this, too, as somebody who played the original. She yeah. was like, the Proto Relic missions are, like, not to be missed from a lore standpoint. Point if you are into Final Fantasy and mm. she had recommended doing the side quest and the proto relic stuff and then she was like all of the other open world stuff like you could skip it mm. if right. you wanted to but narratively this I, stuff is recommended I, I, I'm like you where I have a lot of games to play so <laughs> I, I just do the story stuff I think um, you know, and I played 7 so I feel like you know the original and back in the day and so I think just like getting through the main story stuff you're totally fine if you want to do that and that's kind of what I, I'm going to do just to get through it finish a game for yeah. one, one of these days and uh yeah and get move on to other stuff but i'm also excited for you know part three and then that'll be the end that'll be the trilogy so so no spoilers but has there been some story stuff that you were like upset about or excited about because i know that no. there's been a couple some there's changes. been a couple changes i know I, I i wonder why they made some of the decisions they mm -hmm. did but i'm not like mad about it i think that they um as much as possible stay true to like some some of it is very like so clear cut from the original game so i'm like yeah i'm sad i'm a satisfied customer if it's i know what the f7 ff7 did for me back then and i know that it's not going to be the same and i'm kind of okay with that because it, it is a really pretty game and it's it's still honoring i think a lot of the original like what made it special mm -hmm. so i'm not super mad about that but uh, I, I understand why some fans are sure you know in the story based stuff but um i think it's okay i'm i'm one of those people who's like i'm not going to be butthurt if you expand or do di something different <laughs> that's how i feel we about the that avatar, avatar, avatar live action yeah. actually yeah. yeah like expand like make it different you know make it your mm -hmm. own like i don't yeah, know I, i'm down for some surprises you know that's okay. how i felt about the dune movie yeah yeah, yeah mm -hmm. i want surprises i want you know mm -hmm. something that's gonna 
oh okay i wonder why they made, they made that decision yeah interesting <laughs> are you as obsessed with queen's blood as Brittany and i are oh my god can you get the mobile game out now please? no I am, right? not. I am not but please oh, tell me more okay. why are you obsessed with it <sighs> i think it scratches an itch for a puzzle game that i haven't had in a while because normally i shy away from traditional deck builder games and card games because i get overwhelmed by the idea that i have to learn all of the ways the cards interact together oh yeah yeah and i have to learn specific cards and then i have to build the deck did you play marvel snap or anything i i dabbled just dabbled in marvel snap Mm -hmm. i would not even give it i I mean we're talking like an hour i played actually a a good amount of hearthstone when it first came out yeah like way 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 back in the day um but generally just don't do a lot of deck builders mm-hmm. um and i you know there's several places in this game where the game kind of just like almost makes you play it yeah, yeah. but from the jump it was like really approachable and i think they onboarded you in a really smart way mm-hmm. to the point where i started seeking out the card vendors and being like <laughs> i'm buying every single card that i yeah. can possibly get yeah but it wasn't until i got to the costa del sol section of final fantasy where there's a different puzzle element to the game where you're not Mm. playing against a another player you're playing against like a static set of cards yeah yeah and you have like only these like four cards and you have to figure out how to beat the other opponent Mm -hmm. and there's this one (laughs) that just stumped me i wonder if it's the same one that stumped us (laughs) and i just i was like this has got to be just something i'm not seeing it's like when uh, any kind of puzzle game where you're playing and then somebody comes in and is over your shoulder watching. They're like, oh, you just got to do this, this, right, and this. And right. you're like, oh, fuck her. I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to figure it out for three hours or whatever. And they just come in and instantly solve it. I was like, I bet you if John was here, he would be like, you just have to do it this way. I know. Um, but I finally Steps figured it ahead. out. And I love that it made me sit down and go, okay, should I be moving on and going through with the story and, <laughs> yeah. and proceeding? Yes. But I know this is solvable. Yeah. I'm going to solve it. You became obsessed. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Your ADHD took over a little bit. <laughs> what I really love about the design of what they did with that mini game is that after I completed those puzzles, I was like, wow, I did not even think about how I could be using some of the cards in my deck. Mm-hmm. And it really showed me all of the different ways that I could be playing that I didn't even it's smart gameplay stop to think yeah. about smart i was like design. like the the mind explode emoji I was, right i was like this is but so now good. if you learn that you can probably master any All card game after that yeah. <laughs> you oh know? well you know i think you're giving me a little too much credit but <laughs> i appreciate your positivity yeah um so yeah very excited about the the game just slowly making my way through yeah, yeah. and I'll get so there. many people are loving it so many people are playing it i'm really happy yeah speaking them. of a game people are the, loving the and games. playing yeah. Hell Divers 2, everybody. Oh, yeah. Third week in a row that I brought this game up on, on the show because I finally played it myself. That's a and lot. And what did you think? I first off want to say that both you and Brittany did me a disservice by not fully explaining how the gameplay works. What do you mean? Friendly fire, not mentioned once. Okay, what? wait, I That's did. Like I not swear. mentioned once. That's yeah. a key thing. I swear I mentioned that it's chaos when you accidentally blew up your friends. So I feel like I said that you said that, but in my mind, I was thinking, oh, you mean like when I accidentally like rocket launcher myself in destiny Uh, or like accidentally grenade. But like the the friendly fire in hell divers is real. It's like it's rainbow six siege friendly yeah. fire oh yeah you can every drop bullet a, will take down your health yeah yeah you can absolutely absolutely like drop an ordinance weapon on your friend and kill them it's, it's kind of so the fun, funny one fun aspect of it though because yeah. like you never know when it might happen mm-hmm. and you're just like sorry bro <laughs> and sometimes it always happens in the weirdest craziest ways you're like yeah. i don't even know yeah it yeah. was just chaos you know <laughs> sorry i had the pleasure of visiting my friends at kind of funny last week oh, yeah. and i was streaming with joey and kevin and I, when I was playing with Joey, I literally headshotted her by accident. <laughs> and I was just like, in the moment, I was just like, oh no, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But I mean, this is such a fun formula that they've created in this third person shooter. I, I do wish that they had launched with more cosmetics. Joey and I just kept lamenting, being like, oh, yeah. we would give you so many of our real world it's dollars. It's coming, I feel like. I feel like for some better cosmetics. Yeah. Just like, a different color yeah. <laughs> like just oh yeah one. just like customize the colors or anything yeah, yeah i agree with that um, just, or yeah. make it better for also when you're playing by yourself i feel like they haven't really the solo queue experience yeah. is not as good not yeah. good it's yeah. tough it's tough to do anything alone in that game mm-hmm. um but yeah i agree with the customization it, it, that is a thing i wish they would add i'm sure they're gonna work yes, on that sure it's not 
something they've overlooked. <laughs> yeah, it's money on the table at this <laughs> yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. hope that they can keep their momentum going and don't lose this, like, zeitgeit moments that they have because mm-hmm. there's, there's Magic so many games bottle. coming and going. I mean, I feel like... We were all hot on Pal World just like a month ago. Now no one's talking about Pal World. Everyone's talking about Hell Divers. Yeah. Uh, that uh, seems to be an ongoing thing with games right now. I feel like every month or every so often there's like a new thing and everyone jumps on mm-hmm. and then it dies down. Then it's a new thing and yeah. Absolutely. It just yeah, it happened with Diablo and a bunch of other stuff. Man, dude. Just one after the other. Hey, <laughs> it's fun for now. I know. Yeah. It's good. It's like it, when people are really excited about something and you have your group of friends that you play with, it's just like you have something to do now. It's like, let's mm-hmm. check out this new game. Let's learn and talk about it. And and then, you know, we move on to the next thing after. But yeah. I think it's also really fun. And if you can take it in a lighthearted way to just like lean into the messaging and the jargon around yeah. the game. It's like, hey, you want to spread some democracy tonight? Like it just yeah. feels, <laughs> it feels good to, to adopt yeah. their their the lingo. messaging and their yeah. lingo. And it's that's a lot of what fun. they did really well in this game. Like oh, I don't yeah. think a lot of games did it in a way that was so adaptable and funny. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think this- Very funny game. Yeah, like this kind of works in every sort of, and, it, and it's very characteristic of this game. Like mm-hmm. there's no other game that has that kind of- they just made it really funny and, and it's super irreverent. And yeah. yeah. It, it's laughing at itself. It's like, yeah. we're, we're not, not taking, taking this seriously. seriously. We're yeah. getting dropped in things called hell pods <laughs> onto great planets writing. where giant writing. bugs yeah. and monsters yeah. mm-hmm. and other things yeah. are, are trying to, to kill us. And yeah. it's basically just chaos. Yeah. Like even yeah. the, the training, the tutorial where there's a part where you walk up uh, spoilers for hell divers training tutorial. <laughs> no, <laughs> the, the tutorial <laughs> is, is a waste of time. Well, there, if you walk up to, there's this one section, you walk up to something and it, I can't remember what the word was, but it was something like, like re, we like to test you and, and see if you can really learn how to take yeah. a hit or how to heal yourself. Yeah. And so you press a button and it stabs you through the chest. Yep. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, now you're hurt. <laughs> heal yourself. You're like, oh my God. Like yeah. they're really going for it. But yeah. like that whole Starship Troopers vibe and like Yes, I, I, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, Starship that, Troopers. It, it is a really fun like satire, satire and, yeah. and I'm having a lot of fun with the the yeah. writing, like you said. Yeah. It's so fun. It's silly. Let's keep it going. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't jump off hell divers yet. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. I mean, I'm just getting started. I'm only like level five. So, yeah. same. Level I 10. To, I have to uh, I have to catch up to yeah. Naomi, apparently. Oh, yeah. I know. We got to grind. I've been playing a, a quite a, but I'm not that, as there's people who, like my husband's at, I don't know, 20 or 25 Jeez or something. Louise. I don't know. Well, <laughs> well there, we were what, playing on stream again? with somebody from um, the kind of funny community oh, yeah. uh, who was like level 37 or something. Holy and was crap. Like, That's a commitment. Yeah. Good for Bro. you. Time <laughs> commitment. <laughs> Impressive. Yeah. But yeah, super fun. Definitely looking forward to playing more Hell Divers and I mean more games to come. Yeah, this feels like Fast and Furious. Haven't tried a bunch of games. Haven't tried Suicide Squad yet. Haven't tried no. Skull and Bones yet. <sighs> Got more stuff to play. Haven't tried Prince of Persia yet. Oh, oh wow, my gosh. Prince of Persia is so good, and, and it's only been out that. for six, like six weeks, it five is weeks. So good. Feels like it was out ages ago, and it's like nope, like nope. a month ago. Yeah, so many games. Yeah, homework. I know. I got lots of homework. You just keep playing Dreamlight Valley. Well, if someone wants to come over and do my kids' laundry for me, um, and then <laughs> I can do some of my homework, that would be great. <laughs> you know, but she's in her IP on everything era, so that's super fun for me. Oh yeah. I like oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Toddlers, aren't they great? <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> that exhale. <laughs> tired of cleaning up pee you know oh, no. like, but I, yeah you know what? i was talking i remember who i was talking to but i was maybe it was trisha i was just like i'm grateful that she has not been a poop painter oh yeah Ooh, i've heard of a this poop thrower, heard the tr- a poop eater apparently that is a thing that that toddlers can do too and i was like nope no thank you don't want <laughs> no don't want to deal but heard horror stories from other parents about kids who play with their feces in all manner of ways and i'm like Hmm. haven't done that so not not wood, not it doesn't ever happen for yeah me. at least is this <sighs> is, is, I hope so. it is a piece of just wood checking here. yes yes it is okay good. all right everybody that's gonna do it for our show for this week thanks so much for hanging out naomi thank you so much for coming by yes of course and please listen to my show this week in gaming i, I promise you it's so quick it's 20 minutes just hit click play and if you don't want to listen to it just then get out of it. But yeah. like, definitely check it out. It's on all pa- podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple uh, podcast, all that stuff. I heart. Yeah. 
yeah i heard i heard radio yeah mm-hmm. that's and it's, it's big. if you're in canada listen for the i heart radio show when it goes up so it's going to be broadcast across there i'm going to get some details on that so anyways follow me on all the things and we'll talk more about it we'll put her links in the show notes and we're yes. so glad that you came by yeah rihanna great to see you irl i, I know, know right yeah and violet's first video uh, violet's first visit to the studio yeah, yeah. It's very exciting. i got to meet violet Yay. too such a sweetie the world's cutest baby yes absolutely oh, gorgeous thank you i mean my baby but then your baby but then your baby because your baby's actually a baby my baby's not a baby anymore she's so oh. big <laughs> oh my god we're gonna cry about that some other time all right everybody see you next week bye, bye. Bye.